There we go. And welcome if you're joining us here today. Um, we're just going to hold on for a few minutes while people arrive. I know we've got a few people coming in quite quickly. Um, in the meantime, if you want to have a guess at where these reptiles are in these photos on the screen, please do. And we'll give you the answers in a couple of minutes' time. Some are a bit trickier than others. And do let us know um, where you're coming from. Well, not coming from today, but where you are today. So type in the chat box, let us know. Um, I think we've set the record last time with Australia. So if you can beat that, I'll be quite impressed. Um, but yeah, do let us know. And feel free to type anything in the chat box as we go along. And make sure you just ask any questions later on. So we've got Derbyshire, Halifax, Andover, got quite a range already. Leeds, Cheshire, yeah, we've got someone from Cheshire today, that's good. Altrincham, I don't know, it's personal, is it? Coom, Coom, sure. Maybe. I'm not sure, yeah. Uh, England, uh, Der Derby, Barnsley, We've got another Amelia. <laughs> Having Amelia off. Maybe you'll like the reptiles as much as this Amelia. <laughs> Hampshire, Derbyshire, got lots more people. So yeah, as you're coming in, you feel free to have a guess where these reptiles are in the photos. I think there's one or two tricky ones, but this shouldn't be too hard. You should be able to find a couple of them. I'm having trouble spotting these, James. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I had to do a good look first. I do know where they all are now, Amelia told me. That's what time we are on, so wait another minute. So we've got 33 people, oh no, 30 watching. This is good, keep coming. I wonder how many we'll get today. Well, there we go, Jessica says that she loves reptiles. That's, That's great. Start. That's what we're here for today. Yeah. 31 people. Can we get any more? Can we get those two? I'm sure we can. Someone must be wanting to join. Well, as people are joining, um, I'm just going to remind you of some of the things uh, that we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be talking about reptiles and we've got a few people here to uh, talk about that with you. I'll introduce them in a second. Um, but do remember that if you've got any questions throughout this webinar, and please type them in the question and answer box and we'll be getting towards those at the end of the webinar. Well, so we won't ask them as we go along, but we will remember that they're there and we'll come back to them later. Okay, so we are on two minutes past, so I think we will get started. So uh, my name's James and I'm from Cheshire Wildlife Trust and joining me today, we've got Amelia. Hello, um, I'm the Conservation Officer um, at Cheshire Wildlife Trust um, and I'm leading on the reptile project that we have. And also to help out with all our questions, answers and chat boxes, uh, we've got Emma as well. Hi everyone, yeah, keep your chat coming and your questions. I'll be having a look at them through the webinar and we'll put them to Amelia at the end. It's great seeing all your comments today. Okay, so like I said, uh, if you've got questions and answers, put them in the question and answer box and we'll get to those at the end. Um, we're also recording this webinar and don't worry we can't see you it's just recording Amelia, Emma and me and basically that's just so we can send you the link to this webinar afterwards um, in an email so if you want to ever look up something or you're not entirely sure what an ad looks like you'll be able to come back and have a little look as well. So um, for those of you who've been eagle-eyed you might have spotted some of these reptiles already um, but let's just help them out Amelia and show them where they are. So I think if I'm right in thinking that looks like one of our reptiles here. That is definitely a reptile, not a piece of grass. And uh, this one now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask you for this one, Amelia, because this one's quite tricky. So, um, are you looking for a yellow collar of the grass snake? So, yep, you've got your cursor on it. There uh, we go. Ah, uh, so that's yep. that's our little reptile hiding. I think that's the trickiest Absolutely. one. Absolutely, that's definitely the diff most difficult. And then I think we've got something here, haven't we? Yep. So that mm -hmm. is an adder. And then this, it looks a bit like a pile of logs, I think. It does look but like a pile of logs, but it's, it's not, actually, is it? No, it isn't. It's definitely a snake. 
and here something's curling up there i think yeah absolutely spot on that's a common lizard just move you over there um and i think we've got something here haven't we yeah that's another lizard so, yeah, so good job if you spotted any of those you know they are really difficult to spot they're really difficult to see so yeah we're hopefully going to be able to give you a bit more of an insight about them today yeah today is all about reptiles and um, so we thought we'd start you off with a bit of reptile knowledge okay so if you've got some parents with you or friends with you um feel free to talk to them about these questions and see if you can come up with the answers yourselves and um, so start off with in which of these four places would you most likely find reptiles so that's our first question for you and then second of all we want to know how many species of reptile are there in the world so that's how many different types of reptiles there are out there and you might have got a clue that this includes things like snakes um, so you've got to think about them and some other types of reptiles and then how many are in the uk as well because it's a bit different so amelia should we give them a bit of a clue as to these answers Absolutely. So reptiles are very adaptive. Um, they can be really small um, and they can be really big and they prefer warmer places. Okay, so that might give you a bit of a clue as to which of the four might work for reptiles. Um, how many species of reptiles are there in the world, Amelia? So what, can, what clue can you give them? Reptiles are found in almost every country and Australia has more than 1,000 species in it. So it's going to be more than 1,000 there. Okay, so definitely. Big number. And then what about the UK? Uh, the UK definitely has less than 1,000, uh, definitely less than Australia. Um, and you've got to remember that we're a much cooler climate. So we've got a lot more cloud than uh, some of the sunnier places in the world. Okay, so that lump number is going to be a lot lower. Right, I think we should give them the answers then. So hopefully you managed to get a few answers written down or discussed a couple. Um, so in which of these places would you find reptiles, Amelia? All of them. So yeah, absolutely. Um, they are very adaptive. They'll be in lots of different habitats. Um, and yeah. They generally like a little bit warmer, don't they? And um, so absolutely. how many species of reptiles are there in the world? There are more than 10,000 species of reptile in the entire world. So quite a lot then, isn't it? Lots. How many are in the UK? We only have six species in the UK, so it's a very low number. And that's because it's um, much cloudier. Uh, it's, we're not as warm as some of the other hotter countries that you might have. Um, but the reptiles that we do have have massively managed to adapt themselves to get used to this climate. OK, so hopefully you got some of those right. And oh, yeah, we go through them again. Um, so my question really for Amelia today was, what do reptiles and batteries have in common? So you might be thinking, well, I don't know, but hopefully Amelia can give us a bit of an answer to this one. Yeah, so um, reptiles um, both need, sorry, reptiles and batteries both need to recharge um, themselves. Um, and basically that's because reptiles are cold blooded, which basically means that they need to um, warm themselves up um, so they have energy for the rest of the day. So you like a bit um, of sunbathing, don't they? Absolutely. Um, but in our cooler climates of, you know, the United Kingdom, um, they've actually had to adapt themselves. So actually what they'll do is they'll hibernate over the winter months um, big, when it's much cooler, um, and that means that um, they then come out only when it's sunny um, for the rest of the year or during the summer years, some months. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. The, um, reptiles and batteries have the same thing in common because they like to recharge their energy. They, they need to stay in the sun and do a bit of sunbathing to keep them warm. So um, something like everyone gets a bit confused of Amelia isn't it um that reptiles and amphibians because okay, they're two different types of um creature aren't they however they're very different in a way aren't they yeah so reptiles aren't our only cold-blooded grouped um of animal um amphibians are also cold-blooded um so these are your frogs um and your toads 
Um, so they're found or associated with water and therefore their skin is much moister. They want to stay wet, um, but they don't always um, spend their lives in the water themselves. Whereas reptiles, they've got dry, scaly skin and actually can be found in some of the most dry places in the entire world. So we've got like reptiles, things like lizards, snakes, and then we've got amphibians, which are like your frogs and your toads. So we've got a couple of statements on screen here to have a guess at, is it a reptile or is it talking about an amphibian? So you might want to think about what Amelia was saying about how amphibians like water. So that might give you a bit of a hint. So the first one, they have dry scaly skin that is thick and they live in some of the driest places in the world. So hopefully if you were listening to Amelia then you'll have picked up which one this would be. But well, which one is it Amelia? So this is a reptile. There you go, so reptile. Um, they've adapted to take in the oxygen from the water, so that's like how they breathe, um, and they spend part of their life under the water. So is it a reptile or is it an amphibian? So this is an amphibian. That's also going to be an amphibian. Remember, it likes water, amphibians. And the next one, they can lay eggs or give birth to live young, and they may do so. So many of them do that on land as well. So think about that land. Is it a reptile or is it an amphibian? What do you say, Amelia? Absolutely. I'm noticing some of you in the chat have got it correct. It is absolutely a reptile. Yep. And then three more. So if you've got the first three, you might be able to find these three quite easy then. Um, they have thin moist skin, which can dry out if they are away from the water too long. Reptile or amphibian? Definitely a amphibian. And then next one, they spend time basking in the sun to warm themselves during the day. Now everyone should get this one. Yeah, this was talked about very early on um, where we were talking about how they need to bask in the sun to get energy and that is the reptile. And then last of all, uh, the adults live on land in damp areas but return to the water to lay their eggs. So again with the water, reptile or amphibian? So this is an amphibian. So yeah, they will always lay their eggs in the water um, and the, um, they spend the first part of their life cycle. So if you think about frogs, um, they ha have to spawn and then they turn into tadpoles and then they eventually will then adapt into a frog. So obviously, that's about a little bit about amphibians, but we are focused on reptiles today. So I've got a picture of six reptiles, Kate, okay, that you will find. So if you're not entirely sure what a reptile is, this might give you a bit of a clue as to some of the different animals that are included in this group of uh, animals. So uh, my question though for you is, which of these live in the UK? Because we said only six live in the UK, and it's not those six there. Some of them do, some of them don't. So Amelia, could we perhaps tell them what all these different reptiles are so people have got a bit of an idea? Yeah, so the first picture, that is a common lizard. And then this one here. And then that is a crocodile. I'm sure many of you might know that though. And then this one over here, I don't know if This I... is an adder. So I've got an adder over there. And, and this is a snake as well, isn't it? So. Yes, um, but not, um, but uh, that's a cobra, sorry. This one's a cobra and then this one here now this one looks like a snake but i know you're going to tell me it's not no it's a slow worm it's got a slow worm and this one here that is a tortoise okay so which of them live in the uk so perhaps you could give me a bit of a clue for this one amelia so um the ones that we would find in the uk are going to be quite small um compared to the larger species that just aren't you know that wouldn't be found here yeah so if you think about it the larger ones are going to need lots more sun aren't they to warm them up absolutely yeah. and the smaller ones can probably live here right so hopefully you've got some ideas and some answers and shall we let them know what they are Amelia so what's yes. this first one the common lizard so the common lizard is found in the UK uh, it's only about 13 to 15 centimeters long so it is very small really and what about Mr Crocodile over here much much bigger so not found in the uk so definitely not gonna have any crocodiles around here no and what about the adder over here then 
The adder is, is native to the UK, so we definitely get adders. That might surprise a few people, because yeah, we do have some snakes. And what about this snake over here? Do we have that one? We do not have cobras though, they are not native to the UK. Okay, so you might be a bit relieved about that one. Um, what about our slow worm? Yep, definitely have slow worms. And last but not least, uh, the tortoise there. Although many people might have them as pets, we do not have tortoise in this country. Okay, so that might give you a bit of an idea of some uh, reptiles you might find across the world and also hopefully a few that we find here. So um, I thought I'd ask you, Amelia, um, a bit about the reptiles we've got here. So we've said the common lizard lives here, but could you tell me a bit more about it? So I don't know. Absolutely. Much. So um, like I was saying, the common lizard's very small. Um, it's brown um, and um, but its colour can vary hugely. Um, the females will have this black dorsal stripe down the back, um, where the males will also have this stripe. But it's much more broken in its appearance. Um, they are very fast moving, um, so you might be hard, <laughs> uh, and that is because they go for the food source of um, insects such as grasshoppers. Um, they also have a very special ability, and that is to be able to actually drop their tail. So what will happen if they feel threatened by a predator, um, they'll drop the tail and the tail will carry on moving, it'll carry on thrashing around um, and that will distract the predator um, so that the rest of the uh, reptile can uh, run away to safety. But what's even more fun is the fact that the, reptile, the lizard can actually then regrow its tail. So very cool. It's a bit like a superpower, that isn't it? That it's it just massively like a superpower. Yeah. I wouldn't want to like lose my arm or something like that, even if I was getting chased by something. I don't know. <laughs> right, so that's our common lizard. So we talked a bit about amphibians, didn't we? And we now know that a lizard is a reptile, but a newt is an amphibian, isn't it, Amelia? Absolutely. So a newt um, will look very similar, but it also will have this characteristic of the wet, um, moist skin. Um, it also um, prefers um, damp places, um, but also it will look quite different in appearance. And it's much more slow moving. So, you know, like I was saying about how the common lizards, if, it, if you see something running away, it's probably a common lizard and not a newt. So, okay, we'll see if you can put this to the test. Now it is very tricky, I do warn you, but can you work out if these six uh, pictures here are lizards or newts? So, Remember to think about what Amelia said, you're looking out for a stripe that'll tell you if it's a common lizard and sort of newts prefer that sort of wet environment so they might have a wet shiny skin that might help you a little bit hopefully. Okay well hopefully you've got one or two answers here um, so perhaps we could start telling them uh, one by one Amelia so let's start with this guy over in the top. Yeah so uh, that one is a common lizard um, you might be able to see um, you know the scales on it slightly and yeah that's definitely a lizard. Okay so this one here looks a little bit shinier and also I'm noticing um, that there are, it's on some sand as well so I'm guessing it might be near some water. Yeah so this one is actually a newt. Um, you might actually be able to look at the coloration differences so it's got these blotchy spots on it um, and almost an orange underbelly and that indicates that actually a smooth newt. Okay and then this one here now this one looks very different to our lizard so I'm guessing that might be a newt as well. Yeah so this is actually going to be very very small um, it is definitely a newt um, and you know you can also tell that maybe from the skin it definitely doesn't have any scales on it um, and yeah, but you will find newts out of water. Now this one over here, I'm thinking it's got a few scales on and it seems to have that black stripe, doesn't it? So I'm going to say lizard. It is a lizard, yes, well done. That's good. And then this one here, now it looks quite shiny and smooth and it's on some moss and moss normally grows in wet areas, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And also you can almost see that it's quite warty which indicates that it's a newt. Um, but this is actually one of our biggest um, newts. It's called a great crested newt. Um, and they can actually get quite sizable, but they won't be quite as big as the common lizard. Now, this one here, 
it looks very similar to that one, doesn't it? However, I think it's something different, isn't it? It is. Surprisingly, this is still a common lizard, but it's a melanistic form. So basically that means that all the black pigment is being drawn out of it. So it doesn't actually have any of the other brownish um, coloration that you would normally associate. Uh, and if anyone really uh, keen eyed, you'll have also noticed that it's got a little bit of its tail missing, which is one of the other ways that you can actually tell that it's a common lizard. Sorry, I clicked on a bit too fast there. Yeah, so if you can see, it's just missing its little tail. Um, so that's its superpower, don't forget. So that might have been one you'd spotted if you were really, really looking out. Okay, so those are our lizards. What about our slow worms, Amelia? Well, many people, I mean, first off, what do you think a slow worm is? That's the question I should really be asking everyone because a lot of people might think it is a snake, but it isn't. It's actually a legless lizard. Absolutely excellent, Richard, who's uh, said lizard. Yeah, it is a lizard. Um, and if we go on to the next slide, then I can tell you a little bit more about what, how on earth do you tell the difference between a slow worm and a snake? Um, and there are really three characteristics that you need to be looking out for. Um, the first one is the scales. So if you look at the, at the slow worm, um, it's got this really smooth, almost glossy, shiny skin, uh, whereas the um, snakes have really individual scales on them. Um, the other difference is their eyes. And actually, this is the key difference between them. So this is the one that's, you know, is down the line, what is the difference? Um, and that's the uh, eyelids. So uh, snakes don't actually have eyelids, which means they can't actually blink. Um, which basically means if you see a snake winking at you, it is actually a slow worm. Um, but one of the easiest ways that I find um, is um, looking at the head. So in a slow worm, the head and the body are, have this very seamless join. There doesn't seem to be a very big distinction between the two. Uh, whereas in a snake, um, as the grass snake that you've got there, really has this lovely collar which defines where the head is and it would be very very obvious that the head and the body are completely separate. Okay so that's how to tell a slow worm from a snake. So can we have a little bit more information about the slow worms because they're quite interesting creatures aren't they? Yeah so as I've said they've already got this smooth shiny skin um, but um, their coloration can be quite different um, in males and females. Um, with the males sort of having a grey, browny colour, with the female that you can see just at the top there is a more bronze colour, so a little bit more different. Um, they're also more slow moving. Um, you won't necessarily see them basking like you would the common lizard, and that's because they don't necessarily um, need as much energy because they go after much more slow moving prey like your slugs and your snails and things like that. Yes, yeah, so they're not going to be eating any grasshoppers, are they? No, they won't be. So a lot slower. Um, so then what about our grass snakes? Yep, so um, our grass snake is a beautiful animal. It's got this olive dark green coloration, but what you really need to look out for is the yellow and black collar around its neck. Uh, it might have some dark bars down the side um, but yeah the um, neck is really what you want to be looking out for to identify that it is definitely a grass snake. What about um, how there isn't much difference between uh, males and females um, and even the juveniles if you yeah, there you go are basically just mini versions of the adults so that yeah, they are beautiful animals and yeah lovely. You've got a very cute little baby snake there haven't we? Absolutely. Um, so go on, where did they live then? Because obviously a grass snake, you probably think it lives in the grass. Yeah, funnily enough, um, it's quite not very well named um, because they don't just live in grasslands. Uh, they like all sorts of habitats, um, but they do have this really cool um, skill and that is to actually swim. Um, and that's actually associated with their, what they eat. Um, so they tend to go for your amphibians, such as your frogs and your newts. Um, but also, um, as they are our biggest um, reptile, um, or rather I should say terrestrial reptile, um, they can grow up to a metre long. 
um, which is just amazing. Um, but interestingly, um, they, England is almost at the top of their range. They have a few populations in Scotland, um, but they are usually found further south, and that's because they lay eggs. Um, and because they lay eggs, they need somewhere that's got a stable temperature um, to keep the uh, eggs, well, basically, so the eggs can develop. Um, whereas if you think about common lizards, you might quite often see them um, basking out in sort of August time. And that's probably because it's the female. And what she's doing is she's trying to, or she's basically fertilizing the eggs um, internally. And then she'll give birth to live young. So yeah, rep the um, grass state lays eggs. Okay, and then what about our adder? Yeah, so um, uh, the adder is a much shorter, stockier snake. snake. Um, there's coloration variation again um, between the males and the females, with the males having this silvery colour um, and the females being more brown. But the really key characteristic to look for is that wonderful zigzag pattern down the back. Um, they are also have a, um, a vertical eye um, pupil, um, and that is because they are our most northern viper species. Um, and yes, that does mean they have a bite. Uh, they are venomous, um, but that's actually because they're a sit and wait predator. So what they tend to do is they sort of sit in an area and they'll wait for a small mammal to run past because that's their preferred prey. Um, and then they will inject the mammal with its venom um, and then they can smell their way with their tongue to their food. So not, Very cool. not too good if you're a little tiny mammal then. No, but we no. should be okay. Yeah, we're a bit big. Aren't we? Okay, so I've got a picture of some adders here, Amelia, now there's loads of them. So why is there so many there? So um, there are so many adders because um, adders actually hibernate um, communally. Um, when I say hibernate, it basically means they go away to winter um, and basically um, store their energy for the summer. They have a bit um, of a big cuddle, don't they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and when they come out of hibernation, um, they will literally go to the nearest spot that is suitable for basking um, to get that energy before the breeding season, before the rest of the summer months. Um, and that's why they're all there together. So winter is a big cuddle and then it's like a sunbathing party, isn't it? When they come back out. Absolutely. Right, I noticed there's a few hands going up. So if you've got any questions, just a reminder, you can put them in the question and answer box and we'll be able to ask them to Amelia later on in the webinar. So uh, we're just going to show them what they do when they come out, aren't we, Amelia, here? Yeah, so these are two male adders, um, which, you know, they look like they're, um, you know... Wrestling. <laughs> exactly. It's genuinely um, the fact they're having wrestling. They are trying to assert dominance, um, and that's so that they can, you know, have the female to then breed with. So, yeah. So they, they look like they're having a bit of a dance-off, doesn't it? Absolutely, it's it is it's called the adders dance. Ah, okay, so it's got a name. I didn't know that. So there you go. You might see some adders doing that, doing a little bit of a dance. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So here we go. Let's just pop that back on screen. Oh no, that's the one. Okay, so there's the adders. Um, so we told asked you what the difference between a newt and a lizard was. Um, um but I think your video is. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry, my, it's not quite gone, my screen. Sorry about that, people. There we go. It's not showing. One second. Get it there. There we go. Is that back? Perfect. That's Fantastic. amazing. So <laughs> we asked you what um, uh, was the difference between a newt and a uh, lizard. Now we want to know what's the difference between a slow worm and a snake. So unlike before, these are both reptiles, but what is the difference? So we've got yeah. six pictures for you there. and. If you've been paying attention and you've been listening to some of the things Amelia said, you might even be able to work out what type of snake some of these are as well. And hopefully you'll be at least be able to tell them apart from the slow worms. So 
think about what they've Amelia said. So can you just give us some hints again, Amelia? Yeah, so I'll just go that. over. So you're looking for um, a smooth, glossy skin um, for the slow worm and the distinctive head for the snake. Okay, so think about those characteristics here. So six ones, slow worm snake, and can you even name the type of snake? So let's go to number one. So. Yes, yeah, so I can see uh, some of you guessed got it right. The first one is a grass snake. Yeah, because you've got his little collar there. Absolutely. Got lots of scales. Now this second one, okay, I'm thinking this looks quite shiny. Yeah, so. it is it's a little bit shiny, it is a little bit glossy, and it is a slow worm. Okay, so we've got one grass snake, we've got one slow worm. And now this one, this one's got that zigzag pattern that we were talking about before. It, so it has, yes. Yeah. So can you remember what had the zigzag pattern? That was indeed the adder that had the so. zigzag pattern, which is a snake. It's a good job if you've got that one. And this one here, now this one, it looks like it's got a very sort of smooth um, head that's joined to the rest of its body quite smoothly. So I'm going to say it's a slow worm. You would be correct, James. It is a slow worm. Good. And then this one here, um, can you talk me through that one, Amelia? Yep. So you're looking for, does it have any scales on it? Yeah. And that would be a grass snake. So okay. good job if you've got that. And then this last one here. Now, I can see it's got scales, but it looks a bit different. It does. So anyone that said snake for this is absolutely correct. It is a snake, not a slow worm. But this is being a bit mean to you guys, uh, as this is actually a smooth snake. So it's not one we would get in Cheshire. Um, you would get it down south in Surrey or Sussex, but it's very, it's only found in those places and it's very uh, habitat specific. So not one you would get here, but if you are down that way, then it is one to bear in mind that we do have an additional uh, snake there. So well done if you managed to get those right and well done if you could tell the difference between a slow worm and a snake. So um, I think we probably should talk about a bit more about the habitat. So we talked about them liking lots of different places, but perhaps we could um, learn a bit more about the sort of places they live. Yeah, so as you can see, um, you know, our reptiles are in a lot of different habitats. Um, and that's actually because what reptiles, they're not necessarily habitat specific. What they're looking for is the vegetation structure within a um, a habitat. Uh, they want areas of openness um, so that they can um, bask in the sun, um, but they also want areas of dense vegetation. Um, and that's not only just to hide away from predators, but it's also, as you might have noticed over the last few weeks, uh, we've been having some really hot weather and actually that dense cover can actually um, help them hide away from the sunlight. Um, so that they don't overheat, uh, which may sound a little bit odd saying uh, that about uh, a cold-blooded species. So it's in a way, it's like they like sunbathing, but they don't want to get sunburned. No, absolutely not. So yeah, it's just because they are regulating their temperature from their environment rather than internally like us mammals. Okay, so let's perhaps have a little look at some of these habitats now. Um, we've got some woodland there, so uh, I've got a big red X through this first one. So why would we not find reptiles in that kind of woodland? So, like I was saying, um, but, um, reptiles care a lot about the variation in the vegetation. And the first picture um, is a beech woodland. There isn't a lot of understory or, you know, plants underneath the canopy trees or the big trees at the top. Um, and that means that there isn't anywhere for the reptiles to hide, so it wouldn't actually be very suitable um, for those um, for them. Um, where if you look at the second picture, um, you've got some bracken and you've got some bramble. Um, this offers really good vegetation coverage for them, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and if you look at the third picture, you've got these things called woodland rides. And basically what that is, is it's just a bit of a clearing within the woodland. Um, 
and it just gives them those that open area um, to um, bask in. Um, I mean, that's realistically where you want to be looking for in a woodland um, because you know you might have piles of logs on the sides, um, and you know you might have your common lizards on those logs. Okay, so. What about um, our grassland? So again, I've got a big red X through that first one. Why wouldn't they be there? Um, so yeah, so the first picture, it's absolutely wonderful habitat for insects and a botany for wildflowers. Um, it might not necessarily be best for reptiles. And that's only because it, it's, um, again, not got that variation. So that's what you're looking for. Reptiles like a little bit of difference um, in a habitat. Um, whereas in the second picture, you can see that uh, there's a little bit of scrub nearby. And when I say scrub, I just mean bramble or a little bit of willow nearby that just offers it that extra cover. Um, you might also see in the background, there is uh, some water, um, which would be obviously then suitable for your grass snakes. So yeah, anywhere a little bit more rustic in appearance. Uh, and the third picture, um, is actually a railway siding. So we wouldn't recommend you go near a railway, um, but these are fantastic for reptiles because they are undisturbed. Um, and um, they tend to be on a slope um, and reptiles love a south facing slope. Um, these areas will also have a lot of variation within it. So they might have a bit of woodland, you might have a little bit of um, scrub and again you'll have those open areas of grassland um, which just gives it that variation which they'll love. So that's south facing slope they get the sun all day don't they? Exactly. Yeah um, but then what about heathland and some people might not know what heathland is so perhaps you can tell us a little bit more. So heathland is actually the best habitat for reptiles. Um, down south like i was saying um it's actually got, can support all six of our terrestrial um, reptiles um and that's because it's just very varied um in what it looks like so you've got heather which is basically like a low shrub um and it's low growing um and it offers that protection um but you'll also have areas of openness um where they can bask uh, and it also can be very, very dry, also can have pools of wetness, um, which is obviously good for your grass snakes. And we've um, got a video, haven't you, uh, we have you going exploring? Yes, so, so we've... Uh, before we get to that, let me see if I can share that with everyone. So here we go, go back to the adders. So this is you going out to find some reptiles and doing a survey, isn't it? Absolutely. We hear that, okay. Is your sound working? No, I don't think it's. No, working. I thought. Hang on, let me just make sure. Yeah, I've not got sound on. I'll just double check that. Okay, here we go. That's because it's a mosaic of different horse wards types. There are drier areas which are suitable for hibernation and damp patches which might support amphibians, part of the reptile's diet. We place the reptile refugia throughout our survey site, choosing sunny, ideally south facing slopes near dense vegetation. The dark coloured material heats up, creating a microhabitat which is great for reptiles, but also lots of other insects, such as this ant's nest. Moving slowly and quietly is the best way to approach reptile mats, or if you're just out surveying. We've just finished 
fished out reptile survey and unfortunately no reptiles but that's not necessarily surprising just because we can't find them doesn't mean you won't so don't be disappointed if you don't see any as they're very secretive creatures and very seldom recorded that's why at cheshire wildlife trust we're promoting recording of species spring is the better time to see reptiles because they've just come out of hibernation there's also a second peak in september when you're more likely to see juveniles when you're out and about on your walks keep an eye out for dead wood or anything that common lizards might use to basking sites. Um, there's a little bit of open area, um, close to some dense vegetation such as bilberry, but it could be gorse, bracken, bramble sometimes is good for them to hide away for approaching predators. It's important to record your reptile sightings to help our conservation efforts. So if you are out and about and happen to see a reptile, please share that with us. We need to know where and when you've seen it. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea as to how you can go about finding reptiles. Remember, if you've got any questions, put them in the question and answer box and we'll ask them to Amelia shortly. So let's get back to this. Is that back on screen? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So um, part of the reason reptiles are quite hard to find is because they're declining. So they're, they're, we're getting less and less of them, aren't we, each year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is mostly linked to um, habitat loss, um, like um, our grass snakes really like the wet areas, but we've lost 75% of our ponds. Similarly, um, the common lizard um, has, you know, once was well seen across the country, um, but because of our roads and railways and cities that have cropped up, it's actually broken up our landscapes. Um, adders are having one of the biggest declines um, and the most of being most effective and that's actually because they're just a little bit more picky about where they choose to live um, and they also like associating themselves they, like I was saying about um, having a, the same hibernacular where they hibernate over winter um, and they'll go to the same one year on year and um, so they can be massively affected um, and although the slow worms have actually managed to adapt um, to our more urban style of living, like they love our compost heaps, um, they actually aren't actually that seen or recorded, so it, we don't really know much about them. Okay, so that's just a reminder of what those ones are there. And how can we help them, Amelia? Because obviously if they're in decline, we want to do everything we can to sort of help them. Yeah, so absolutely. So one of the best ways you can help is just by making your garden a little bit more wildlife friendly, uh, whether that's having log piles, um, because that might encourage hibernation, maybe not of, uh, necessarily of reptiles themselves, um, but other hibernating creatures like um, um, hedgehogs use, will use it. Um, having areas of your lawn that's a little bit messy and uncut um, just makes, gives them that cover. Um, and also, like I was saying, compost heaps. These are fantastic um, places um, for um, reptiles, um, like your slow worms, because you'll obviously, they're warm, they're, they're slightly damp, um, and um, for your slow worms, they'll have like your slugs and your snails, perfect food sources. It's like sitting in the buffet all day. Uh, and the grass snakes, they can use them to lay their eggs. Um, which again is a fantastic um, way of you know looking you know looking after your garden a bit more for wildlife. Um, also, um, we can, you can even put out some um, what we called refugia, which are basically these artificial pieces um, of black material or um, iron um, corrugated iron. Um, and you might actually find that even if you don't attract reptiles, you might get something else on that might use it. So that's a few things you can do in your home, log piles, long grass, compost heaps, and maybe put a little bit of um, corrugated iron or felt out so it can hide under there. 
Okay, so I guess this brings us on a bit to what you do um, for work, Amelia. So could you tell me a little bit more about this Cheshire Reptile Project that you're involved in? Yeah, so realistically, you might not get reptiles in your garden. It might be quite unlikely, but one of the biggest ways you can actually help us is by telling us when you see them or where you see them. Um, and that's because they're so underreported that what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up a map of where our reptiles are. Um, and we need your help for that. Um, basically, we want to know what you've seen. So hopefully you'll have learned something and you'll have been able to identify it yourself. Um, or you could take a photo and send that to us because um, we'll be able to identify it for you. Um, we need to know where you were. Um, so we need to know the location. And we need to know when, which is the date, and who. And that's you, the recorder. Fantastic. So uh, obviously when we send out our email to you with this the recording of this webinar, um, we'll have some details as well as to how you can get involved with the Reptile Project. And this is, Absolutely. I'm guessing this Similar projects going elsewhere across the country, aren't they? Yeah, so um, what we'll do is um, I will also send you a link and it's basically called Alert, and that basically just tells you where to send your record if you're not in Cheshire itself. Um, yeah. And that will just tell you where to send them. And because, yeah, it isn't just Cheshire that's having this problem. Um, and lots of other counties across the UK will want to know this information as well. So wherever you are today, you can hopefully get involved as well. So I guess that brings us on to our question and answers. And I've been seeing lots of questions have popped up. So in a minute, Emma's gonna come back and hopefully ask some of your questions to Amelia. And there she is. Hello. I'll hand over to you then, Emma. Thanks, James. Well, there's been so many questions coming through. It's fantastic to see. And I've learned so much through this webinar, Amelia. I think one of the, I think I've just been scribbling down little facts that I enjoyed and I think the, lizards dropping their tail is just absolutely fantastic and to know it grows back as well when you call it a superpower it really is a superpower isn't it that definitely um, and also the fact that snakes smell with their tongues i think that's really interesting um so we have we've had quite a few questions coming through so one of the first questions that came through and i'm not sure we covered it really about snakes shedding skin is why why do they do that um, so actually I've got a snake skin here, I shouldn't actually uh, get it out during the webinar, um, but basically that's a snake skin and what they'll do is they'll actually shed it um, and that's actually to help them grow. So as they grow their skin doesn't grow with them, so like, much like you need to go shopping for new clothes, a snake will need to get a new skin as such. Um, which is just fantastic. Um, yeah. They can do this twi up to twice a year, which is just incredible when you think about it. Yeah, it really is. Um, so someone has asked here as well is, um, how many babies do snakes and lizards have? Um, well, like I was saying with the uh, grass snakes, uh, they can lay eggs up to 10 to 40 eggs in one clutch um, and actually a lot of the females will tend to um, all lay their eggs in the same location just because it tends to be uh, at that optimum temperature for them they tend you know like i was saying about the um compost heaps you know if it's a great place for them they can do that and then for you could get you know eggs in groups of up to 200 if needs be wow that's amazing yeah. um so Christine has asked, where is the most popular place to find reptiles? Now, I'm not sure if she means in the UK or just habitat specific. Um, so whichever is easiest to answer, Amelia. Yeah. So if you uh, were going to go on holiday for a, uh, a, a to look for reptiles, down south is probably more likely. Um, but that doesn't mean you won't get them in Cheshire. And like I was saying, uh, heathlands are definitely um, your best bet if you want to go and go reptile spotting so find the heath and you'll find the reptiles hopefully hopefully <laughs> don't want to promise they anything. are difficult to spot as you yes. uh, would have seen uh, so yeah. no guarantees but you know you never know okay so if we were going to look for reptiles amelia what would be the best conditions or like time of day things like that if you want to go out looking for reptiles yeah so you ideally want to be going out uh, early morning um, but obviously uh, it doesn't have to be that early if you're going out in the spring and winter months and that's only just because um, as it's a bit cooler they need to, um, 
to they'll only come out when it gets a bit warmer to warm themselves over the day so yeah morning is best so it's, morning nice and warm yeah nice warm yeah. it's got to be a nice sunny day it's been, it's great isn't it you just pick a nice day and you're yeah. like yeah this seems like a good day to go reptile searching yeah. I think I quite like your job, Amelia, only working on nice, warm, sunny mornings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if someone's asked here whether, whether they could be bitten by a snake. Do we need to be worried about being bitten by um, snakes at all? I mean, I have said that um, we do have the adder, which is venomous, but actually you really don't need to worry. The chances of, you know, them wanting to bite you is very, very slim. Um, you know, like I'm going to repeat what everyone knows is that, you know, they're going to be more scared of you than they, you are of it. Um, and just don't be silly around them. Don't go yeah. throwing them with a stick or anything yeah. like that. They don't want that. Um, now, someone asked a question here, Samantha. She said, are tadpoles, we've covered what is, um, what's an amphibian and reptile, but she wanted to know if tadpoles were an amphibian or a reptile. Yeah, so tadpoles would be an amphibian. And that's because actually what tadpoles do is they'll turn into frogs. Yeah. So very cool. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what have I got here? So someone asked, are all snakes poisonous? No. So the, so the grass snake doesn't even have a bite really to it. Um, so yeah, very, very harmless. And yeah, in this country, being worrying about um, snakes is not an issue at all. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the adder that has a bite and the grass snake that doesn't. And then there's a smooth snake. Does that one It would not know. Okay. Okay, so we've got what here now. I hesitate to ask this because it's not it's not about native um snakes <laughs> someone's asked um how long is a fully grown anaconda Ooh. now we're not sure i did have because i thought i'm not sure we're going to know this so i had a look on google and i was amazed that they come up as 30 feet long which is longer than a double decker bus there you go i mean yeah i do more with more with the native species so yes. yeah, it's always good to know now now i've learned something <laughs> um what did i write down here now it was taught it was it was earlier on when we were talking about how many reptiles we have in the uk and i didn't put the name down unfortunately so i, I can't remember the name but if it was you just pop yourself in the chat box saying about the reptiles and they're saying, do we class the leatherback turtle as a reptile as visiting the UK? I mean, technically, um, the leatherback turtle is a, um, a would be considered a native reptile. Um, but are we were talking more about your terrestrial reptiles. And because um, the leatherback turtle never actually get onto land in the UK. Yeah. You know. That's why we kind of excluded it from our number, yeah, but yeah. you know, there is that disparity of, you know, if it's a sea animal, then technically maybe it should have been included. So maybe it's seven, but um, terrestrial wise, um, the ones on land, it's six in the UK. Okay. Um, now, again, Amelia, I'm apologizing if I'm gonna throw any questions your way that you're unsure of, but someone's asked here if we have axolotls in the UK. Do you know anything about that? No. Or am I going to catch you off guard? <laughs> you are. You have definitely <laughs> caught me off guard. Sorry. Okay, not a problem. And someone's asked how many species of snake there are. Now I've been through UK species of snakes, but are you sure about how many species worldwide there are? I don't know how many species there are worldwide, okay. but yeah, there are three species within the uh, England, or rather the UK of snakes. Okay. So the species in the world, I had a quick, another quick look at our friend Google. Well, Google well, is fantastic. Yes. Everyone should know this. Yeah. And that came up with a roundabout number of 3,000, which I thought was absolutely incredible. Uh, yes. It doesn't surprise me it's that many at all, though. Yeah. Um, and I thought, just to finish up with, um, oh, where's it gone now? That was it. I thought I'd do a special little shout out to Quentin who's been in the chat. I'm not sure if you've seen Quentin in the chat here, but there is a lot of knowledge there. I think that he lives in Leeds and he was asking about re records of Leeds, any snakes. He was unsure about whether 
that he'd see any going out, but where do you think would be the best place for Quentin to look to see if there's any snakes on leads? Is there a rep is there a database that he could look at? There is there is one in um he would want to go to West Yorkshire um record centre. Um we can actually um we can actually have a look on um, MBN Atlas as well that will show records. Um, but yeah, there should be, there sh I reckon there will be grass snake definitely in that area. Um, but yeah, you'd have to look at a map, I think, to be able yeah. to know where to go. But um, we can definitely put you in touch with the right people who will Fantastic. be able to give you a hand. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. There's been some really great facts coming up. So thank you very much, Quentin. And there's been some really great chat. A lot of people really excited by snakes and lizards and yeah, all the reptiles. It's fantastic to see. So thank you very much for all your questions. Right. So thank that, you so much. Thank you, Emma and Amelia there. Um, so that does bring us to the end of our webinar today. Um, if, I'm sorry if we didn't get time to answer all your questions. Um, but obviously, yeah, you can go and find out some of the answers yourself now. And remember that if you want to watch anything from this webinar again, if you want to try and find out um, if it's a slowworm or a snake, or you want to work out what type of snake it is, we will be sending uh, the link to this video um, so you can always look back and see if you can find it. So um, as we said earlier, we'll be sending over details of where you can submit um, your records um, of reptiles so if you spot any please do let us know Amelia really wants to know don't you Amelia? Absolutely yeah so we'll make sure we've got all the details of uh, how you can get involved um, and obviously yeah you can do that across the country because there's lots of different record centres that'll want to know this as well it's not just Amelia. Okay so thank you very much for joining us today and um, it's been lovely to have so many people interested in reptiles and I'm sure we will see you again in the future at another event. So thank you very much for joining and have a good day.